Trias, Multivac, and Veracity. How much longer are those three assets going to consolidate? And what levels do you need to be looking for for a breakout so you know when to get your Boltard hat on? All right. Hey, this is Tim with Cosas Verdes Crypto and Altcoin Trading Show. Thank you for coming back to the channel. Returning viewers, if you can do me a quick uh, favor and ignore the sirens that you might be able to hear. I don't know how my uh, condenser microphone is picking that up or not, but take a second to hit like. And uh, leave me a comment down below, even if it's just LOL, you suck, or you suck, LOL, or actually you really do suck, whatever you want to do. Uh, those comments are much appreciated to help out the algo. And uh, new viewers, this is what my channel does for you. This is not crypto news. This is not crypto fundamentals. It's not what this co uh, channel covers as of yet. Rather, how this is going to help you is this. Those fundamental and news-based resources aren't going to help you have a better idea of what's happening when you're clicking around with your money. Because most YouTubers cover things when it's already pumped and typically that's when you need to be selling so this channel helps you understand wait if i'm clicking by uh, do i have a good idea of what i'm doing from a charting perspective or not and so that's that's what we get we're getting into so if you like this by the end of the uh video go ahead and uh, subscribe let me know if you want to be a cryptilian or a crypto crackhead those are the gender neutral pronouns that we have within the community let's jump into it because i got to get off to a soccer game here Really soon, maybe I shouldn't even be recording this, so this will be fast. All right, so um, try us. I'm going to look at the each chart in two different ways. Structurally, bare naked price, and with weekly EMAs. All right, so I have two lines drawn on try us. These are going to mark when it's going to break out with a strong, strong probability, okay? So the bottom line is a daily closure. So you might have a breakout starting when a daily candle finally closes above that daily candle there, which is marked at about... Oh, this is versus Bitcoin. Boop, boop, doop, boop, doop, doop. Fail, Tim. Fail, Tim. It's going to be the same chart anyway. All right. So when you get a daily closure, and they're actually flip flop, the weekly is below it this time, but it's still fine. When you get a daily closure above $10.27, that is very likely going to mark a. Uh, uh, an explosion in trias price. However, on the weekly though, your target is a little lower. So if you get a weekly closure above, even before the day closes above there, if a week, like on a Sunday, closes above, so again, a weekly candle, if it closes above $9.57, that could be your time to say, hey, Try us very soon, maybe even the next day, could really start taking off and almost disregard the daily candle closure uh, second line up top. So those are your two targets. You might want to draw these lines on your chart if you're a Trias fan and label one weekly. So you just hit the, so on the left-hand side, it's under, it's the one, two, three, four, it's the fifth one down. If it's not a T, go to text, label it. So weekly uh, closure, And I'm going to label this one daily closure. I'm not sure which one will stimulate the breakout, but it's going to be one of those two. Clearly, if you want Trias to break out faster, you would hope for a weekly closure first, and then it just starts skyrocketing and disregards the next one. But those are your two lines. Again, I'll tell you those levels one more time. Weekly closure is around $9.58, and the daily closure is around $10.32. Want to mark those off. If you're a Trias fan, let's go to Veracity. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at how well this is respect to the triangle that I drew in a long time ago, or several videos ago. Oh, crazy, it's still within the triangle. So honestly, I don't need to change my analysis on here. Um, so you're likely looking for late September to mid-October. Uh, so the reason why Veracity needs to consolidate a little bit longer is because it just went on a really nice run without a whole bunch of pauses, right? It had some pretty healthy um, areas of consolidation, okay? However, the run in totality was pretty big, and you know, after cooling off, you need to let your uh, indicators reset and your daily EMAs and even weekly EMA catch up. So it went on a 400% run. So with 400% run, or actually, I should measure from here. You went on a 355% run, so you need about 35% correction. It looks like it's already got that. Yep, yeah, it got 38. See how that works? Rules of thumb, they work almost every time. Um, not every time, but way over 50% of the time they work. 
Uh, so you already got the correction, and that's kind of why in my Solana video, I already roughly have a target where I know it's got a statistically strong likelihood to uh, hit, and I got a lot of thumbs downs because uh, I said it before, really, Solana was clearly going down, and uh, and they didn't like it, but now that it's going down, I, if I made a Solana video with a 50% uh, correction target, based off a rule of thumb that works way more than 50% of the time, um, I bet I would get a little bit more uh, or fewer thumbs up after people realize, oh, wait, this guy might know what he's talking about <laughs> um, to some degree. So anyway, uh, we also have some EMAs supporting uh, price here on this. I don't remember what that is. It might be the 12 hour 55. So let's go see what that is. I can't remember what I put on there. And that's why it's important to label stuff, Tim. Yep, it's the 12 hour 55, 12 hour 89. All right, so the 12 hour chart is getting this right. And again, you might wanna be using the 12 hour chart on Veracity. So if you're a big Veracity fan and you wanna know, hey, when should I start getting scared out, right? Well, put on the 12 hour chart and put on the 55 uh, and the, um, the 89 EMAs, all right? So guard up if you get a 12 hour candle closure or two below the 55 really get defensive if you get a 12 hour candle closure below the 89 it is that simple and until those two things happen especially this one if you don't get a closure below the purple line well this triangle you might have wicks down but it's roughly going to come back into the triangle so you can expect this triangle to play out okay and not break fully to the downside if you have the 12 hour 55 ema which is blue the 89 which is purple and i've drawn them out so i've essentially guessed the slope here see how i can move this Right, so I drew this, the thick purple line that isn't dotted, that, that's what um, TradingView is giving me, right? So I've drawn them in, and you can see that the 12 hour 55 is roughly what is forming the uh, the bottom side of the triangle. So Veracity is gonna consolidate and doesn't have much of a threat to the downside as long as it's closing candles above the uh, 12 hour 89 EMA. So right now, that's what you can expect. A little bit of consolidation for another, I don't know, like let's say two more weeks and it'll probably break out somewhere in this box, okay? And this box spans from as early as the is October 1st to uh, the middle of October and that's those are the times that it's gonna fall. I mean, that those are the times that I have for a potential breakout with uh, the assumption that Bitcoin stays over, let's say 45, or er, actually at this point, 46K. Somewhere along that lines, as long as Bitcoin sideways are better, this is like very likely the most probable play out of most scenarios that you could come up with with Veracity, okay? So that's honestly good because the longer it consolidates, remember, so Veracity chest pounders, not a bad thing to be a chest pounder. I have a, chest, a few chest, count, chest pounding coins too, but the longer it consolidates, the bigger your move's gonna be. So I know it's boring to watch this and Up Forever is more exciting, but really Up Forever is going to set you up for getting aped into buying more than it crashes on you. So this is very, very healthy. And honestly, I got to take a step back and look at Veracity's run. This is a really, really healthy run. OK, I mean, just take a look at this. So look at this run here. Pop up, consolidation, pop up, consolidation, pop up, consolidation. This is all one big consolidation. It's a little volatile for a consolidation, but right now the volatility is going down, which is good. That's what you want to see. So you might have a little bit more volatility than more consolidation, and then you consolidate at the top. Something to that effect is going to happen. But this, honestly, this is what a healthy... Let me zoom in so you can see this better. This is what a healthy run looks like. This is what you want to see. When you see straight up bull crap, and straight up another time like that's what gives you the bigger corrections this looks like it's going to stick its landing folks um i really don't as long as bitcoin stays above you know even 44k i bet veracity does not close candle a 12-hour candle below uh that purple line which is the 89 ema so this is all looking good all right let's go to multivac uh the one that confused the hell out of me last time and you are staying above that line yeah i mean there's really nothing bad with multivac right uh the if you didn't see my last video on Multivac, you really should watch it. I sat there confused as honestly, you should watch it for entertainment, but also educational purposes only because it took me a while to find this line. The whole time I knew I'm forgetting, so I'm missing something, I'm missing something. I could feel it in my bones like this bullishness doesn't make sense until I found this line. And honestly, <clears throat> what what also made me um, pretty bullish on it, which I should check up on these uh, indicators is the 12 hour EMAs. Uh, primarily the 55 and the shorter ones here. They're all consolidating right now. So see where these, uh, let's take off price here. So look, let's put price back on. See where price went up to last time, watch. So price, not the EMA. So there's no EMA up here. It's just bare naked price up here, right? right? So look, no EMAs. Price went up there, but now 
now very strong EMAs are at there or at that same exact level. So let's do no price. And so the likelihood of price falling back below all of these three really strong EMAs that provide support on top of the support itself from this horizontal, I mean, multi-vac is probably gonna put a little time here, especially if Bitcoin's not going up too much, going sideways, but to consolidate on top of a previous all-time high is fantastic. Like, this is really good. Um, now let's compare how healthy this run looks compared to the last, uh, compared to um, uh, Veracity's. It's pretty similar in shape, so bare naked price here. Um, you had a run, consolidation, run, consolidation, run, consolidation with, so you need this actually to have less volatility. So remember how I said on Veracity, at the beginning of its upper um, end, it had a lot of volatility. Well, to get a bigger move out of Veracity, at some point, you want low, low volatility, right? Which means price not super up and down, rather just midget looking, you know, sorry, to, I, I shouldn't have used that word, whatever. Small candles, you want a series of small candles and that's when it's gonna get of its push. So let's go ahead and take a look at the daily EMA, see if they're, yeah, they're all caught. Honestly, this could give another pop and then consolidate. It just based off its uh, daily 21, which is the yellow line. This looks like it's gonna give another run up. It's probably going to pass three pennies. It's This looks like it's going to hit three cents or maybe wick above. This could hit close to 3.8. It's going to hit somewhere between three and 3.8 cents, and then it's going to probably consolidate, maybe come down, come up here, consolidate at this line, something to that effect. Um, it, it looks like it's going to give another pop before it loses its volatility and consolidates. So I would give targets between uh, three to a wick past that line, maybe, yeah, maybe 3.7. Three pennies to 3.7 pennies, then your consolidation. Um, I don't see any, it doesn't really need to correct after that because it's consolidating after each little pump. So, but it looks like it's going to get another one. Um, it really, I mean, if you can read, so take a look at this. This is why I'm thinking this, watch. Let me take off the daily 10. Just look at the, the yellow line. The daily 21 is often a blast point, right? It's like a launch pad. It can act like a launch pad during good moves. It's launching off of it. Now, could it, fail this launch, come back down and wait for the 21 to ride and then break out, you know, late September. Absolutely. And honestly, that would be pretty healthy too. But right now it looks like she wants to get herself some because uh, yeah, it looks so it, this, this launch looks like it's going to be successful, particularly if this day can close above these upper candles, the next day is going to be big and it can do it all in one day. So let's say um, today on Saturday, it closes above uh, the, you know, this area here, which is about 2.13 cents. Um, the next day it alone, right? So just this candle stays here and closes there. The next day alone could go straight up to 3.3 .3 cents in one day. I mean, it can do it very, very quickly because this is, I mean, this is a whole consolidation. And if you close above the top of the range, your next candle, and honestly, next two candles could be pretty big. So the next two candles doing that could put you up to like 3.7 the upper end target before then it consolidates. And then it's gonna let this 21 catch back up again. Then it'll probably keep going. <laughs> um, yeah, because look, it, I mean, you can just see it's basing off of its 21 roughly. So it's probably going to pump base off 21, pump base off 21 until it doesn't. So it's going to work until it doesn't. Right now it's still working. So that's my assessment for these three. So if you liked what you saw here today, go ahead and uh, take a quick moment. Uh, hit like and subscribe. Do what that uh, flashing annoying sign behind my fat face says. Um, and uh, if you're new and you liked what you saw, go ahead and subscribe. And again, leave me a comment. Let me know if you want to be a Cryptillion or Crypto Crackhead. I like to know those things because it really, if you label yourself that way, um, it's just interesting. It, it, it says something about the psychoanalysis of how you trade and, um, you know, what your strengths and weaknesses are. And I kind of like to see the ratio of how people comment. So leave me that comment. Uh, it's, it's important to me as well. And we'll see y'all later.